Let's test it out. Awesome! Everything is working great! You know what, Tom? What's that, Professor World? I think it'd be really cool to boost someone's confidence today. I have enough confidence for the both of us, Professor World. Hmm, no, I'm talking about lab assistant Neon. What if we let her run the lab today? I think she would enjoy that. Cool, let's call her then. This has nothing to do with the professor's conference that you just heard about this morning. The same one you really wanted to go to, does it? No, conference? What conference? Ah, lab assistant Neon. How are you doing? I'm so happy to talk to you today. Oh, hey, Professor. What kind of science are you doing today? Oh, you know, just the everyday boosting experiment. <gasps> that sounds cool. Totally cool. Hey, uh, I just had an idea. What if you ran the lab today and did your own awesome boosting experiments? Sounds cool, huh? Well, I'd have to rearrange my plans for today, but... Excellent! Uh, Calm will show you where everything is. You guys have fun, and I'll see you guys later after my conference. I mean, after... Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Oh. Well, looks like I'm in the lab today. It's time to get ready for an experiment. <sighs> hmm... Well, now the question is, what are we gonna boost in our experiment? Haka! No, not you, Akuro. Your water powers just got boosted, remember? Haka! Well, what else is there to boost? Hmm, maybe we should brainstorm some ideas on this whiteboard. Just gotta clean it off first. Assistant Neon, that's it! That's what we can boost. Erasers? No, magnets. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Do you know much about magnets, Com? Oh, approximately everything. Great, then I think it's time for the power of the periodic table. <gasps> the strongest form of magnetism is called ferromagnetism. Three of the most common ferromagnetic materials are iron, nickel, and cobalt. You may remember iron as the element Irox is made of. Iron has the atomic number of 26. Its atomic symbol is Fe. Iron is solid at room temperature, highly ductile, and is, by mass, the most common element on Earth. Cobalt's atomic number is 27. Its atomic symbol is CO. Cobalt is solid at room temperature. It is hard and lustrous with a silver-gray coloring. Cobalt is famously used in lithium-ion batteries, like the ones in your smartphone. Lastly, nickel. Atomic number, 28. Atomic symbol, Ni. Nickel is a silvery white lustrous metal with a slight golden tinge. It is hard and ductile and is resistant to oxidation and corrosion. As you may have guessed from the name, nickel was once widely used in the manufacture of coins, but recently has been replaced by cheaper metals. So these three metals are magnetic? Well, in a sense, everything is magnetic. See, all substances are made of atoms. Atoms have electrons, which are constantly circling particles around the core of an atom. This movement creates an electric current which produces a magnetic force. You mean this paper and Pierre I mean, this rubber chicken, who I definitely haven't nicknamed or formed an entire backstory for, is magnetic too? Precisely. However, the electrons in that paper, Pierre, and in most substances, spin in random directions, effectively canceling out the magnetism. Oh, I get it. So in cobalt, nickel, and iron, most of the electrons spin in the same direction, making it strongly magnetic. Exactly. So, to turn a piece of iron, cobalt, or nickel into a magnet, all you have to do is introduce it to an existing magnet. All magnets naturally have a north and south pole. Opposite poles attract each other, while the same poles repel each other. Oh, I think I get it. So if I take these scissors, which are only weakly magnetic, and I run an existing magnet over them, then the north-seeking poles in the atoms will all line up in the same direction, and this force will generate a magnetic field, turning these ordinary scissors into a magnet? Ta-da! Impressive, right? Now, if the opposite poles attract, but the same poles repel, I'm wondering what happens if both of those forces act on a magnet at the same time. 
Hmm. Oh, I know. I have the perfect idea for an experiment that will super boost magnets. I know that laugh. And there are too many breakable things in the lab. I think you should take your super boosting experiment to a safer environment. For this experiment, we are going to be using magnetic force to launch this metal ball. That guy. First, we are going to glue these two dowel rods together to make a track. Next, we are going to use three metal balls and one cylindrical magnet. Starting with our magnet, we are going to place it on our rails sideways. Then we're going to add two metal balls to the front. And now for the fun part. Wow, isn't that cool? It sure is, but how on earth does it work, Assistant Neon? Well, glad you asked. Let's take a closer look. The metal ball is placed on the rail. There's potential energy stored up in between the ball and the magnet. The ball is currently experiencing an attractive force to the magnet, but it cannot act on this pull because it's being held in place by yours truly. But as soon as I release the ball, it'll be immediately drawn to the magnet, converting the potential energy into kinetic energy. Let's watch. The ball then strikes the magnet, transferring its kinetic energy through the magnet and onto the balls on the other side. The ball directly next to the magnet is experiencing a much greater magnetic force than the ball on the outside. This magnetic pull is strong enough to keep the first ball in place. The second ball is much further away from the magnet, meaning that the attraction to the magnet is much weaker. When the ball strikes the magnet, the force transfer of kinetic energy is strong enough to break the magnetic attraction, launching the outside ball. Now that we understand how it works, let's see what happens if we add in another magnet and two more balls. Oh, that was so cool. Now, if you look closely, you can actually see that most of our kinetic energy from the striking ball is being transferred to the outside balls. However, there is a small amount of energy that's forcing the magnets to slide backwards on the rails. This means that some of our kinetic energy from the striking ball is being transferred to the magnets. Now, if we fix the magnets to the rails so that they cannot move, then all of the kinetic energy will pass through them and onto the outside balls. In theory, this should cause a stronger launch for the outside balls. Let's test it out. Awesome, everything is working great. So I think it's time to add in more magnets. All of the magnets! <laughs> oh, uh, where, where was I? Oh, magnets, yes. Did you see that? Oh, it happened so fast. Let's play it back in slow Slow motion. Whoa, so cool! Now you may have noticed that the more magnets and balls that we add to our experiment, the stronger and further our outside ball launches. Good eye. Now this happens because the magnets are actually boosting our experiment. This means that for each series of magnets and balls that we add on to our experiment, more and more kinetic energy is accumulated, thus boosting our experiment. I say we put the boosting to the test on some unsuspecting targets. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
This is awesome! Can you imagine what we could do with an even longer rail and even more magnets? The boosting power would be incredible! Uh-oh. Yeah, you're right. It is getting late and the professor will probably be back any minute. So I should probably head back to the lab. Okay, fine. But you be the best guard chicken. I'll be back. <laughs> well, it looks like that's it. Lab assistant Neon, come! Welcome back, Professor. Oh, so glad to have you back. You're never gonna guess the award they gave me at the conference. Best experiment? I knew this was about the conference. Even better. Best Professor Award. Talk about boost. Oh, congratulations, Professor. <laughs> Thank you, I couldn't have done it without you. Ahem. Especially you, Calm. you're the best. Much obliged. Now, you can take over the cleanup from today's experiment to make up for you leaving the lab today. Yes, Calm. Well, it looks like I'm on cleanup duty. That's all for Professor World today.